next we have the the woman of the hour. It's her place, Dr. Jessica Jameson. So she'll be very comfortable here. There she is. <laughs> yes. And she will be showing off the interesting <laughs> procedure here. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for letting us come to your place, use your stuff, Thanks, and put on an amazing show. This is wonderful. Thank so you, you get so to much. take over now. Okay. You're in charge. I'm very excited. All right. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the intercept procedure um, and just go through a couple slides here and then we'll get to the actual uh, nitty gritty of how to do the procedure itself. So for tumorigenic pain patients, um, the demographic research estimates that there's about one in six chronic low back pain patients who actually have vertebrogenic pain. The highest prevalence of this is in the 40 to 60 year old population. Clinical data from the trials that are done by Relevant um, <clears throat> reveal that patients really present with this axial low back pain, uh, includes midline pain, and that it seems to be a lot worse with activity, with sitting, with bending, with lifting. When I talk to patients and try to tease out kind of the pain generators, I ask them, if you had to take a three-hour car ride, would that be a problem for you? And a lot of these vertebrogenic pain patients will say, oh, yes, there's no way I could take a three-hour car ride without significant pain. Or I'll ask them, if you had to do a lot of bending lifting, would that be a problem? And this is in contrast to the questions that I ask them uh, for facet-mediated pain, which is, if you're doing activities that involve extension and rotation, does that make your pain worse? <clears throat> the indications for this procedure are chronic low back pain of at least six-month duration. And I don't know about everyone else, but when patients get to me, yeah. they have certainly had back pain for more than six months most of the time. They have to fail to respond to conservative care. And that, that is really defined as all of the things that they do before they get to us, right? So physical therapy, anti-inflammatories, medications, chiropractic care, some other types of maybe interventions that we would offer them, steroid injections, facet blocks, these sort of things. They need to have MRI changes that are consistent with modic type 1 or type 2 changes at one or more levels. And this is on label from L3 to S1. The features that we look for um, when it comes to these type 1 or type 2 modic changes on an MRI, so the type 1 is inflammation, uh, edema, end plate changes, kind of some fissuring of the end plate itself, um, and these are hypo-intense signals. And the type 2 is changes to the marrow of the vertebral body, which includes normal marrow replacement by fat um, and a hyper-intensive signal. Um, and just to sort of add on that, I think that, you know, previously we would see these modic changes, or our surgical colleagues would see these modic changes, and we would say, yeah, that may hurt, but we don't have a whole lot to offer you, right? Yeah. So we would offer epidural steroid injections, or, you know, we'd send them to a surgeon and say, can you, can you fuse this? But I think our surgical colleagues, as well as us, know that fusing for axial low back pain is not something that is a very, has a very high success rate. And so we really didn't have a lot to offer these patients. And so they were sitting in our practices going through kind of all of these steroid injections and we'd try things here and there. Um, and, and we had not a lot to offer them. And now I think we have a pretty, pretty remarkable treatment with really good evidence behind it uh, that, that can get these patients some pretty significant relief. So I, think, I think that's huge when you talk to the surgical colleagues because they say, listen, in the end, we end, would end up fusing because they just had no other option. And then you really feel terrible because the data shows, yeah, 33% get better, 33% say the same, and 33% of those patients usually end up having worse back pain. Correct. Um, adjacent level disease, all that stuff. So, you know, it's, it's pretty innovative that we have a chance here now to really not manipulate the spine at all and get rid of that pain. Right. And, and, and I don't know about you, I know you're in a similar practice to mine, but when my surgical colleagues found out about this, oh, uh, now I'm getting left and right. Oh, you know, I, I can't even keep me. up. Yeah, they exactly. flooded me. I'm like, well, you're changes, yes. see your freedom. Yeah, That's what I get exactly. all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I think that, you know, it's helpful for them too, because they want to help these patients as well, but they, again, had, had no real things in their tool belt to offer. Exactly. Um, so the procedure itself is a same day surgery, very brief recovery. Uh, implant free, it preserves that spine structure like we were talking about. We're really not changing the anatomy. Um, we're, we're doing a very quick uh, in and out sort of procedure. The long term pain relief after a single treatment is remarkable. So the data is up to 6.4 years and it's maintained. And so when, you know, when you're initially talking to a patient, you're talking about the base of vertebral nerve, that's the nerve that we're targeting, and we're talking in a, about an ablation. Now, a lot of these patients who have been in your practice hear ablation and they think the set procedure, right? I already had that. I yeah, had that exactly. All the time. I already had that. It didn't work. Or, yeah. You know, oh, so I have to have this every six to 12 months? Yep. And so it, it's great to be able to show them the data that says, no, no, no. I mean, we've got data to 6.4 years, and it, and it doesn't seem to have to be repeated. So that's, I think that's excellent as well. These patients are reducing their afterward utilization of injections, and the, and the, uh, the procedure itself has a very excellent proven safety profile. So this is exactly what we were talking about, is that five plus years. And you can see the, the different um, <clears throat> studies that have been done on this. Looking at that mean VAS score that starts at a 7, 
and goes down quite significantly to about a two and stays there, right? So when we talk about any new procedures or, or therapies within our space, it's really important that we have long-term results from this. If this is something that we have to repeat every six months, it's probably not a useful therapy for us or for our patients or for the payers, which also has to be considered as well. The safety profile, as we talked about, is excellent. <clears throat> they collected all of the safety data from all of these trials. Collectively, the serious adverse event rate is about 0.21%, which is quite remarkable. These events include things like vertebral compression fractures, hemorrhage with perforation, hematoma. Uh, the majority of these fractures occurred in high fracture risk patients at, um, at two separate spinal practices. So, in these clinical studies, about 28 non-serious device or procedural related adverse events were reported, so about 5.9%. Most common is increase in back pain, onset of leg pain, um, and all of these were kind of mild to moderate and very transient, and I've seen some of these in, in my patients over the years as well. As. The median time to resolution of these minor uh, issues is about 48.5 days, and typically we're treating these with conservative oral medication. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, so Gina... My brother's an ophthalmologist, and he tells me I need to wear these all the time. I, so I, When I saw you walk over them, I think about it all the time. <laughs> he yells at me like, anyway. Sometimes my eyes hurt after a long time. I'm like, is that the radiation? I don't know what that is. You're going to be blind but, by next year, man. I know. Okay. So, all right, Gina, we're going to look at L4. It's going to get So let's look at L4 here. <laughs> oh, I got I to do up and down. Take a shot, see where I'm at. It's a new way of... Uh... This is the new way we move the scene. Uh, we move the wag a little bit more this way. Um, so let's get a straight AP of L4. So, the, so if I'm picking that I'm going to do L4, the first thing I do is I square the superior end plate of that level. So we that is involved in angling cranial caudal, um, and then I really try to get a true AP with that kind of rainbow C approach there. And our lovely x-ray tech here is with me in the OR all the time, so she's very used to me saying, no, not that one, a different one. Okay, <laughs> perfect. And then what I do, so if I'm looking at this in an AP picture, then I, I, I would plan out my approach based on which pedicle looks the best, right? Because you're going to enter on one side or the other. Um, if I'm doing multiple levels, I'll, I'll really evaluate um, the most difficult level, which oftentimes is that S1, and decide which side I'm going to go to on S1. And then I kind of hop to the other side for the level above and back to the same side for the level above that. So on this one, I really like that left L4 pedicle much more than that right one with that lovely osteophyte that's coming off the superior aspect. So, so then we're going to, so we squared the top, we've got a true AP view, we've decided we're going on that left side. Now we're going to oblique the C-arm toward the side that we're entering on. And the goal there is to get that facet joint to be somewhere around that 50% line in this oblique view. It's actually pretty good. Beautiful. All right. My next step is to figure out where I'm going to enter. I usually mark that. I usually I use these ring forceps to keep my hands out of the x-ray because when my brother scared me about my eyes, I started worrying about my hands. All right, picture there. Okay. So you kind of the goal here is to kind of dock at that nine or ten o'clock slot. So that would be the incorrect location. Picture here. All right. So then you're going to decide where you want to enter. Probably enter a little bit lower than that picture here. Maybe a little bit more medial. So, so typically then I would mark, skin mark, and then I'm just going to use the scalpel to really just kind of just make an incision so that it's a bit easier for my tools to, to go through. Here. I think that's a great picture you see too. There's no stitches for this procedure. It's just a puncture. Um, you know, a lot of times when I see patients that follow up showing 10 days later, you can't even really find them. Right. Yeah. Them and, and I talk to them about that as well. I talk to them about the fact that they're going to have, I, I don't use, they, they really have a band-aid over top of a little skin glue. Yeah. So, um, okay. So then I, I, as I said, I keep my finger kind of out of the uh, line of the, we switch your ring. <laughs> I'm very left-handed. <laughs> okay. There we go. We're coming closer here. So the goal here is actually to find that nine ten o'clock docking point here. Um, and to feel both, right? So you're going to enter this until you actually feel. And, you know, taking that time in this docking is, is, is important, right? Because it's, it's a little more nuanced than a kyphoplasty in my mind. Saving time later down the road. Certainly saves you time, yeah. So, 
So I, I like that docking spot. All right, so then we're just going to do a little bit of a tap here, right? But this, I think this is probably going to work. Come on. There. All right, at that point I'm going to switch to a lateral, what I like to do is see the length of the pedicle, see how far I have to go from that lateral view, so we look for a true lateral here. Do you do any preoperative imaging, you know, review before you get in to kind of give your idea of pedicles or? Um, so I will look at the, so I do flexion extension x-rays on these patients, because yep. that is one of the contraindications to be like the dynamic listhesis, and this is probably not something we want to do here. Um, and then I do look at the MRI and kind of plan my trajectory for each of these levels as well. So typically when I go in there, so to me that's a little bit, I can see that. Yeah, I think there. So my thought on this is that I'm a little low on that pedicle, so I would like to be kind of at that 50 yard line. So, you know, a couple options. If I have real good per purchase here, I can try to recorrect that. Um, but what I would typically do is come back to that oblique view and start just a little bit higher because it's going to save me a lot of time. If you make a hole with this size of a cannula and then you decide you have to do something different there, it's a lot harder to redirect it after there's a giant hole through that pedicle. Come back to the oblique here. And that's, you know, one concern with hypoplasia or any particular access is, you know, we want to go down the pedicle. We don't want to get in the nerve. You don't want to reach the medial goal. So take take your time. You know, I always tell them AP lateral, AP lateral. Looks good. That's good. That's good. I had to do yeah. reposition it. I wonder if our wag's on. I'm wondering what that means. Let me make sure that actually seats. That's good. Okay. That looks really, that looks really good. Okay. okay. So then with my with my two pictures here, then I usually ask, ask my x-ray tech to swap that over and then come over to lateral here. So I can see what was my last picture in that oblique and then compare that to my lateral. So I know how far do I have to go. What I don't want to do is breach that medial aspect of the pedicle before I've entered the uh, entered the vertebral body. That can be problematic. All right, let's see. Is that better? Do you want to try the wag wheel? Yeah, let's wag just a little bit. Which way you want me to go? You want to I trust here? you. Yeah. <laughs> let's do a little bit of both here. So, uh, you want to wag the other direction? Because what we're looking at here is that our AP doesn't match what we see in this lateral. So, we're looking at that pedicle, and, and in that AP view, it looks like a perfect spot on the pedicle. But in this lateral view, it looks like you're very inferior and in that you potentially wouldn't even go through the pedicle. So, let's. I think it's this way. I think you're right, yeah. And this is part of the nuance of every procedure, right? Line everything up nicely. So in order to aim the tip of any of these trocars, whether it's this or contraplasty, you're going to push the handle toward the foot so that the tip goes toward the head. Another option you have at this point is to swap out to a bevel, so this is the diamond tip. Um, can you come back to straight AP here? So we'll just make sure we're not... Say nine times out of ten, I swap to a bevel once I make purchase, just because it directs a little bit easier. Little scoliosis always. Yeah, always happens. Okay, so certainly not too meaty. No question about that. So then I know that I want to be a little bit more superior based on that lateral. Uh, and then I'm fine from a uh, medial standpoint. I could probably even be. I like when that happens. Yes. Because you know you're safe. <laughs> I don't right? want to have to correct the other way. Yeah, you'd rather yeah, correct, correct the lateral than the medial. And one thing I'd like to point out, if, it, if that's okay, is sure. the nice shot we have from the head going in right here, this angle that, that Dr. Jameson has is, is beautiful. That's that angle you want to see. We don't want to be going straight down because eventually we have to curve. Correct. Right. So take note of that. She's, it, to me, it's that's great. So we swap that. Let's go back to lateral here. 
I'm happy that I'm within that pedicle. I'm not too medial in this AT view. <clears throat> so, if we're treating the L4-5 level, let's say on this, um, both for human bodies, mm -hmm. correct? Um, okay, so now you can see the posterior aspect of the vertebral, vertebral body coming close to that. So, my plan now is that I want to enter that. I've got to get the the tip of the trocar and then kind of that neck in there as well before I can move on to the next step. But again, I know that I'm okay from a medial aspect, so picture there. Picture there. And there. All right, that's good. All right, so then the stylet comes out. What do you want to do? You don't put the straight in? Mm, well, you yeah. do it the old school way. I like it. Me too, I'm old school. I like it a lot. I don't know what that means, but okay. <laughs> All right, this is a J style There's a little art form or uh, challenge sometimes to get this in. Um, and this and this sits down in this, and you stand it up, and then you got to get it in that little hole. Sometimes really it takes a few. Yeah. Sexy. There we go. My average is probably three or four. So <laughs> Better be lucky than good, my friend. Okay, so <laughs> sometimes we can see, so so these have arrows on them, so the arrows should line up. When when your scrub tech hands you this device, this this wing nut should be all the way down. That's a safety precaution. If you're not paying attention, they hand it to you all the way up, there's a chance that you could push that um, uh, too far, cause a problem there. So that's kind of a little cool. So then you're gonna you're gonna spin this wing nut counterclockwise. I do it one or two threads, because I'm, I don't know, I'm a nervous Nelly, I like to just make sure everything's going the right way. So I pound in a couple threads. <clears throat> And then recheck that. Good. Okay. So some uh, okay, picture there. So now I want to, okay, good. So that corrected a little bit. You can see the initial one was just a tiny bit superior. And then I just, all I did was move this, this the entire device a little bit inferior and retake a picture and that straightened out a little bit. Picture there. Okay. Picture again. And what's our target zone? Again. There we go. Fifty percent more. Sure. Good. And then we also have to get across that midline too. And we'll look. So I typically will place it in this position first, and then I'll come back up to the AP. So we'll look at that straight AP again, and just make sure that we're across midline. It's a relatively robust. It may not be, and then that's. In, in, in the cadaver, it doesn't turn as well off here. Yeah, and I've got a few more um, threads that I can go, so I would just have that on picture there. Great. So if the if, if I was concerned, so let's say I, I said, you know, as a purist, I don't know if that's perfectly across midline. So then I can take out this J stylet from the center, and it's playing. Sorry, your excellent scrub tech. That thing doesn't work out. I, you know, okay. A little less stressful. <laughs> Picture there. So this is a straight stylet. You got to hold it at the top because if you try to hit this thing without holding it at the top, then it'll break. <laughs> it'll be done. Picture there. And the goal here is again to get across the line. I probably just push it across. Many times I you do a little tap at this top point just to get it across there. Good. So now I'm happy that that is all the way across the line. I'm gonna do a little plunging just to kind of make sure that that track is good. Take out that straight stylet. Move on to this beautiful. Probe. Probe goes in to the first line. I take a picture there and make sure that I'm straddling midline there. I'm very happy there. And then the next step is to spin the wing nut <coughs> clockwise to retract the sheet from the tip. And you're going to do that all the way till you get to the second white marking. Uh, at this point, it's plugged into the generator, so you'll see the impedance change as well. I'm going to switch it. <laughs> picture there. Heavier. Picture there. Good. All right, so this is it. So I saved the AP, I saved the lateral. I say to my lovely rep, that's so perfect, I want a seven minute burn. It's a 15 minute burn. So then we've got seven minutes that this will have to burn, and then we move to the next level. So if you're looking at L4 or 5 disc space, you're going to do the L4 and the L5. If you're looking at the L3 4 space, you're going to do the L3 and the L4. Um, or you may do L3 for S1, depending on what that MRI shows. But while this is burning, then I typically will move on to the next level. Um, and do the exact same thing on the opposite side just to stay away from this probe here. And so that's a seven minute to a 15 minute burn depending on how
how much I like that the perfectness of that location. Um, and that's it. Then we take everything out. I put some skin glue on, put a little bandage over it, and they go home. Beautiful. Everyone that's is happy. All the perfect time. procedure with, <laughs> with a pretty tough scoliosis, rotational and lateral. Um, great endpoint. Um, very very impressive. Thank you very much. You've incorporated this into your practice. It's you've seen great results. That's right, and yeah. You know, it's one of my, like anything, you know, some of my challenging patients are those who have, you know, six levels of motive changes. And yeah. I think the reason that those are challenging is because typically they have other stuff happening too. They don't just show up with motive changes. They've got, you know, facet arthropathy, they've got stenosis that goes along with it. So sometimes the expectation setting is a really big piece of this procedure and all of the other procedures that we do. But really talking about these are the symptoms that are going to get better. And then the patients really kind of know what to expect. My favorite patient for this is like you. You know, yeah. like a 40 year old, maybe he's not 40 yet, I should say. <laughs> like, you know, 40, 40 to 50 year old with maybe one to two level motive changes. Yeah. That is that is just my favorite patient to do this on because I, I just feel like they get better and we make such a difference in their quality of life. Totally agree, and that's what it's all about. Thank you very much, not only for showing off the interesting procedure, but for the whole day in general. Thank uh, you. That was beautiful, that was perfect. <laughs> we went over the data, went over the indications, went over the procedure. If you're out there, you want to do the intercept procedure reach out to Relieve and Med Systems. They're a great company. Um, they've helped me out a lot in my life. They've helped yeah. you out. And they've helped a lot of patients out. So, very excited. And um, we're going to get on to the next uh, commercial.